Hello guys, so this week we are going to talk about error handling in Next.js and in React by extension. React has an external API for handling and recovering from errors that a lot of people don't know about. It's called error boundaries. So let's talk about them. So from their docs, an error boundary is a special component that lets you display some fallback UI instead of the part that crashed. For example, an error message. So there is a specific API to create an error boundary. So they have an example here that you're going to use. So you have to create the error boundary class class and then add all these props and states variables and uh, because of the way error boundaries are implemented it's not possible to implement uh, this error boundary as a function component so you have to use class components to do this now next.js follows this react format to create error boundaries so if we go to the error handling docs for next.js there is a way that they implement these error boundaries so there's two paths that you're going to follow here there is the app router path and then there's the pages router path so in the app router path error boundaries are implemented by adding an error.js file next to your page component but in uh, pages router this is implemented uh, differently so in pages router you have to create the error boundary class by yourself we are going to try to handle errors using uh, the app router and the pages router side by side so let's start with the app router so we are going to go with the uh, this example error page of theirs so let's just copy it so this is how a local component looks like so it's a simple page with a navigation bar at the top and a button at the bottom which when clicked counts down a number so this home page is rendered by this page.tsx file here so per their docs to handle errors for this page we need to add an error.js file so let's add an error since i'm using typescript let's call it error.tsx and then let's paste the code that you've just copied uh, from their page so let's look at this error component briefly so this is a client component so as you can see here error components have to be client components and uh, this error page receives an error object in the reset function so the error object is the error and then the reset function is uh, to reset the error so we also have a use effect hook here where we log the error message message so if you had a reporting service for example you can send the error message here and then we display a message here telling the user that uh, something has gone wrong with the app and then a button to reset the error so this button calls the reset pro which hopefully resets the error so the home page renders a button component so let's open this component so this component renders a button with an on click handler that when clicked reduces uh, the state variable count by one so we want this component to throw an error and uh, we want the error page here to be able to handle that error so before we begin editing this page there's a very important uh, aspect of the error boundary that i want to cover so this is not covered on their error boundary docs here on the new docs but if you go to the old docs there's a very important section here where it shows uh, the limits of the error boundary so the error boundaries do not catch errors for event handlers asynchronous code like set timeout or request animation frame server-side rendered pages or errors thrown in the error boundary itself so for example let's say we want this page to error we could for example in the event handler here throw an error say uh, yeah let's call it error thrown from button component so if you click the button this should crash the page right so let's save this and then test it so let's click the button you can see that uh, our error has been thrown here but like uh, this is the default error overlay of next.js our error handler here has not been called so this covers one of the first conditions that we read about error boundary they cannot take effect in uh, event handlers so to trigger the error boundary we have to call it outside of this event handler so let's try to get the component to just crash on render and after that you can now see that uh, our error message is being displayed so react is able to catch this error and since this error will always be run every time the component is rendered there's no way to recover from this error so if you click try again the component will just continue erroring so let's try another state where we are able to catch this error so for example, we can say that uh, if the count equals to zero, we can throw an error message. So let's see how React handles this. So let's click five, four, three, two, one, zero. You can see our error is thrown and our error handler catches it. And if you click try again, you can see that our state is restored. You remember in the error, we had a reset function. So the try again calls the reset function. So the reset function tries to restore 
to rebuild the component tree from scratch. So this is very useful to be able to recover from errors. And you're going to find out why this is so important in a moment. Now, although that is useful, it's not that cool use of the function. So just from the name, an error boundary will create a boundary between your component and surrounding components, where if your component throws an error, the surrounding components will not be affected by its error. So we can use that concept to use this error page in a more effective way. So for example, in our page, we have two components that we're displaying here. We're displaying the nav component and then the button component. The error is being thrown in this button component, but you don't want to have to destroy the whole component tree just because this component has failed to render. And if you look at the demo here, that is what is happening. So if we break the page, you can see that the page becomes blank and our nav bar is no longer visible. So this button component throwing an error affects surrounding components. Now that brings me to the next concept that I want to talk about and that is layouts. So a page in the app router is made up of three important files. There's the error file which you have covered, there's the page file which you have covered and then there's the layout file. Now the layout file is sort of a wrapper for the page component. So the page component is passed to the layout as part of the children props and the error component or the error page creates an error boundary for the page component not for the layout component. So if the page fails to render the error component is used to display the error message. Now what this means is that if a page fails it does not affect the layout of the page. So the layout will not crash with the page and we can use this bit of information to restructure our page component here. So we want the nav component to be unaffected if the button component fails. So what we can do is to move this nav component from the page component into the layout. So what we can do is add the nav component just below the body of the layout. So the nav component will now become part of the layout. So let's save this and see the effect. So let's try to crash the page again and you can see that the page crashes but the nav component does not crash with it. So it's unaffected because it's part of the layout. And this is the same case for nested layouts. So for example, let's say we have a nested page here. Let's call it dashboard. Then we add a page with TSX file inside it. So let's make the dashboard similar to the home page, which means it will just render the button also. But also let's add a couple of files to this page. So we need the error file. So what you can do is you can copy this error file and then paste it to the dashboard page. And then we can change the description here to say there's a dashboard error just for differentiation purposes and then also the dashboard page needs a layout so let's copy the home page layout and then add it to the dashboard page so we also want this layout to be as simple as possible so what we want it to do is to say return a main wrapper element and then just render the children inside that element and also we want to add another element of this dashboard layout which is another navigation bar so we have another navigation bar called horizontal nav component so we can add it here and then save the file so let's visit this page in our browser so it's the dashboard route so you can see that our dashboard page sort of extends the home page because now we have the nav bar and then the additional horizontal navigation bar that you have just added so this means that as you add more pages with more layouts these layouts extend the root layout and also these pages can have their own error message instead of uh, the root error message so let's test this ui to see how the error throws so let's try to break the button so you can see that now we are displaying the dashboard error instead of uh, the root error that we are displaying on the home page and then also notice that only the component that has failed is being affected here so the layout remains unchanged so however nested the layout that layout will not be part of the page component so if the page fails the layout will remain unchanged so that's a very important part of uh, the layout and its relationship to the error boundary so i think that should cover error handling for the app router so let's try to get the same setup working for the page router so remember for the page router docs, error handling is done by creating the error boundary component by yourself. So it's not done automatically for you. So they have this error component here that you have to copy and use it as our error boundary. So let's copy it. So let's create an error boundary component under the components folder here. So error boundary.tsx. So we can paste the new error boundary component here. So as I mentioned earlier, the error boundary has to be a class component in order for it to work. That's because it 
it's using React APIs that can only be accessed in class components. So that includes lifecycle methods like component did catch and static methods like get derived state from error. And then the error handling state is handled by storing the state in this state where we have a has error boolean that handles if the component has errors or not. And then we check that state variable. If the component has an error, we render our, our error UI. Otherwise, we render the component's children. And also there is a way to reset the error state by just setting the has error value to false, which will force the children to render. So if you look at the docs further, we need to add the error boundary component under pages app.js file. So we need to wrap the child component with this error boundary. So let's do that. So in our pages app.tsx file, we need to wrap this with the, the error boundary component like that. So let's save it. So for the pages directory, we are rendering this page here called home. So to access it, we go to the home root in the browser. So let's try to break it to see if our error boundary will come into effect. So the error overlay here hides our error, but if you hide it, you can see that our error boundary comes into effect and we can reset the state and then break and reset the state again. So it works similar to the app router. Another thing we want to fix here is uh, the same issue we had with the app router where our nav bar crashes if the button crashes. So if this button crashes, the whole page crashes, but you only want this button to crash not the whole page so you remember for the app router we used the layout.js file but for the pages router the layout file is this app.tsx file so we can use this as our layout so what we can do is wrap this error boundary here in say a main element and then just above the error boundary, we can put our navigation bar. So our navigation bar will be outside the error boundary for our button component. And then inside the page component, we can get rid of the nav component. So if we try to crash the button component again, it won't affect the nav component. So only the button will crash and not the whole page. This should really open your eyes on how error boundaries work. So an error boundary is just a boundary for errors in your component. Components. So if a component is going to error out, if you wrap it in an error boundary, that component will not affect the other components. It's like you're putting a fence over that component where if anything happens, nothing will leak out to other components. If you think about it this way, it means that the error boundary can live anywhere in your app. It doesn't have to be in the app.tsx file. So for example, since we know that the button component is going to fail, we can remove the error component from this app.tsx file. So let's remove the wrap and just render the component and then remove the error boundary. And then inside the home component, we could wrap only the button component with that error boundary. So we can add the error boundary here and then inside it, we add the button component. So this will create an error boundary only for the button component and other components will remain unprotected. So if we save this and then try breaking the component again, only that component will break. So the error boundary will only cover this button component. The rest of the components will remain unaffected and won't be re-rendered or crashed because this crashes. And error boundaries can be nested. So you can have an error boundary for the app.tsx file here and also still have another error boundary for the button component here and they will still work so that if all this fails then the root error boundary will be invoked. Just the same thing with the layouts. Just the same thing with the app router. So if child pages don't have error components in them, then the root error component will be called. And also another thing that I'd like to highlight is that you don't have to write the error boundary from scratch. So in the React docs, they recommend using the React error boundary NPM library to manage error boundaries for your React app. So this component also exports an error boundary that has more features than uh, the error boundary we are using. So for example, you can provide a fallback prop where you can provide a component that should render in case the child component fails to render. So like an error component, for example. So if you don't want to write it from scratch, you can use React error boundary to add error boundaries uh, all through your components that you anticipate to fail. So that should be all I think. Let me know if I missed something in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.